This presentation is to help you in writing ionic, ionic formulae. Before you start, you must learn the charges on the ions. This is actually easier than it first seems. This is because the group number can tell you a lot. Group 1, 2 and 3 ions all form positive ions with the charge relative to their group. So group 1, 1 plus, group 2, 2 plus, group 3, 3 plus ions. Group 5, 6 and 7 also form um, charges relative to which group they're in. So an ion in group 5 would have a 3 minus char charge, in group 6 would have a 2 minus charge, and in group 7 would have a 1 minus charge. With the transition metals, so the metals across the middle of the periodic table, they're always shown with Roman numerals next to them telling you about the charge of the iron. So iron 2 have got a 2 plus charge, iron 3 have got a 3 plus charge, copper 2 have got a 2 plus charge. So in effect, you only really need to learn the ones that are left. So the ammonium ion is a nitrogen, four hydrogens, and all together that particle's got a one plus charge. Hydroxide is an oxygen and a hydrogen, and both of those together have got a one minus charge. A nitrate is a nitrogen, three oxygens, that so all together have got a one minus charge. A carbonate is a carbon, three oxygens, that all together has a two minus charge. And a sulfate is a sulfur, four oxygens, that all together has got a two minus charge. So, the best way to show you this is via an example. The first one is sodium oxide. Step one is to write out the ions with their charges, the ions that make up the compound. So in this example, sodium is in group one, it's got a one plus charge, and oxygen is in group six, so the oxide has got a two minus charge. Overall, the compound must have no charge. So we need to find the lowest common multiple that both charges will divide into. In this case, two can be divided into by both one from the one plus here and two from the two minus here. That means that the lowest common multiple of both of these values, so one plus and two minus, is two. Now work out what you have to multiply each ion by to get the value of the charge to equal the lowest common multiple. So, to get the value of this 1 plus charge to equal 2, we have to times it by 2. This one is all already 2, so we multiply it by 1. This means that our overall charge now for our sodiums, if I had two of them, would be 2 plus, and for one oxide is a 2 minus. We now just put this multiplication into the formula. So the 2 here for Na2O has come because we need two sodiums to get a 2 plus charge to cancel out the 2 minus charge on the oxide ion. Let's have a look at another one, calcium nitrate. So the ions, calcium, 2 plus charge, and a nitrate is an NO3 with a 1 minus charge. So the lowest common multiple, I've got a 2 plus and a 1 minus, is going to be 2, because 2 can be divided by both 1 in the 1 minus here and 2 in the 2 plus here. So what do I need to multiply each by to get 2? Well, I've already got the 2 plus charge here, so I multiply this by 1. And here I've got a 1 minus charge. Remember, it's not a 3 minus charge, it's a 1 minus charge. So I need to multiply this by 2. That will give me a 2 plus charge here, because I've just got the 1 of them, and a 2 minus charge here, because I now have two nitrate ions. Putting this into the formula this time is a little bit more challenging, because the nitrate needs to go into brackets. This is because it's made up of more than one particle. It's made of nitrogen and three oxygens. All together, we need to times that by two. And now for our third example, iron three oxide. So we've got three plus charge due to the Roman numeral three here. And the oxide has got two minus charge because it's in the group six. So looking for the lowest common multiple, this time they're both 3 and 2 will both divide into 6. 
Okay, so 6 can be divided by both 3 and by 2. So 6 is the lowest common multiple. So what do I have to times each of these by to get a 6 plus charge here and a 6 minus charge here? Okay, well, if I multiply the iron by 2, I will get a 6 plus charge. And if I multiply the oxide by 3, I will get a 6 minus and they will balance and cancel out. Putting that into the formula gives me Fe2 for my two ions, O3 for my three oxides. Now you try these. Pause the video here and look at the answers in a second. OK, so lithium sulphide is made up of lithium 1 plus and a sulphide ion with a 2 minus charge. So for those to balance out, I need to get a 2 plus charge on my lithium. So I'll multiply my lithium by 2 and my sulphide by 1. Overall, I get a formula of Li2S. The magnesium chloride. Magnesium's got a 2 plus charge. Chloride's got a 1 minus charge. So for the charges to cancel out, I must have two chlorides for every one magnesium. My formula becomes MgCl2. Beryllium nitride. Here I've got a 2 plus charge and a 3 minus charge. The lowest common multiple here is 6. So to get a 6 plus charge on my beryllium, I need three of them. And on the nitride, I'm going to need two. Overall, this is going to be Be3N2. Calcium hydroxide. Here I've got a 2 plus charge and a 1 minus charge. So I'm going to need two of the hydroxides, the OH minus, to cancel out the 2 plus. So overall, I'm going to have Ca, open brackets, OH, close brackets, twice. Sodium sulfate. Sodium's got a 1 plus charge. The sulfate has got a 2 minus charge, not 8 minus. So 2 minus S, 1 sulfur and four oxygens all together has got a two minus charge. So I'm going to need two sodium ions to cancel out my two minus on the sulfate, and I get Na2SO4. And the final one, potassium carbonate. Potassium's got a plus charge. The carbonate's got a two minus charge. So I'm going to need two potassium ions to cancel out my two minus on the carbonate, and that will give me K2CO3.